JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for June the 9th. I am Harlambos Pissuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the dollar traded lower against uh, the majority of the other G10 currencies on Monday and during the Asian morning Tuesday. It lost the most uh, versus the yen, the kiwi, the Swiss franc and the Oz in that order, while it decked out some gains only against the SEC. The greenback was found virtually unchanged versus the euro and the British pound. Now, the weakening of the dollar suggests that markets continued trading in a risk on fashion yesterday, but the fact that the yen was the main gainer points otherwise. Thus, in order to clear things up, we prefer to turn our gaze to the equity world. Here, most major EU indices uh, closed slightly in the red, dragged by losses in technology and healthcare stocks. That said, the US session was marked with much more optimism. All three of Wall Street's uh, main indices gained more than 1%, with Nasdaq hitting a new uh, record high. At this point, it's worth mentioning that the cash index managed to enter a charted territory already on Friday. The upbeat morale rolled, rolled somewhat over into the, the Asian session today, although Japan's, uh, Nikkei, although Japan's Nikkei 225 slid 0.35%, China, Shanghai Composite and Hong Kong's Hang Seng uh, were up 0.54 and 1.83% respectively. Now it seems that investors were somewhat indecisive ahead of uh, Wednesday's FOMC decision. Participants uh, in the EU markets may have decided to lock some profits ahead of the event, while US and Asian traders may have remained willing to hold their longs for a while more, perhaps due to Friday's much better than expected uh, US jobs report. The report revealed that uh, the US economy added 2.51 million jobs instead of losing 8 million as the forecast pointed, with the unemployment rate falling to 13.3% from 14.9%, beating estimates of a surge to 19.7%. In our view, this suggests that the worst with regards to the coronavirus is behind us, but it remains to be seen whether Fed officials will share that view as well. If they do, this could help equities and risk-linked assets, assets to continue trending north as investors abandon safe havens. Despite the recent uh, tensions between, between China and the US, as well as the civil unrest in the US, market participants may have been placing more bets over a quicker than previously thought global economic recovery as governments around the globe uh, uh, around the world keep easing their restrictive measures adopted a couple of months ago aimed at c controlling the fast spreading coronavirus. Among currency pairs, uh, despite the latest recovery in the yen, the ones that may perform uh, better in such an environment may be those consisting of a risk-linked currency and a safe haven like Aussie dollar, Aussie yen, Kiwi franc, etc. etc. Now, as for today's events, uh, during the European morning, Germany's trade balance for April, Eurozone's final GDP for the first quarter, and the bloc's employment change for the quarter are due to be released. The German trade surplus is uh, forecast to have declined to 10.2 billion euros from 12.8 billion, while Eurozone's final GDP just expected to confirm its preliminary estimate, namely that the Euro area economy shrank 3.8% quarter over quarter during the first three months of 2020. The, the bloc's employment change is expected to show that the Euro area economy has lost 0.2% uh, jobs after gaining 0.3% in the last quarter of 2019. 
Later, from the US, we get the jolts uh, job openings for April, which are expected to have slid to 5.75 million from uh, 6.19 uh, million in March. With regards to the energy market, the American Petroleum Institute weekly report on crude oil inventories is coming out, but as it is always the case, no forecast is available. Tonight, during the Asian Morning Wednesday, we have Australia's uh, Westpac Consumer Sentiment Index for June, for which there is no forecast available. China's CPI and PPI rates for May are also coming out. The CPI is forecast to have slowed to 2.6% year-over-year from 3.3%, while the PPI rate is anticipated to have fallen further into the negative territory to minus 3.3% year-over-year from minus 3.1%. So that's it from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT time. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.